First Chronicles 13. Notice the number 13. 13 in the Bible is rebellion. And David consulted with the captains of thousands. We just read through them. Chapter 11 and chapter 12. And with every leader. I mean, and with hundreds and with every leader. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, If it seems good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad unto our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel, and with them also to, to the priests and Levites, notice how they're last, which are in their cities and suburbs. They did get cities, they did get land out of the children of the tribe, but they didn't get one particular for them. That they may gather themselves unto us. And let us bring again the ark of our God to us. For we inquired not of it in the days of Saul. So during the, the reign of Saul, that ark of the Lord was just put off somewhere, never reverence, never given any conduct to it. Saul did not do what was supposed to be done. I would assume for the sacrifices and all that. And all the congregation said that they would do so. For the thing was right in the eyes of all the people. What about God? We're going to make a big mistake here. So David gathered all Israel together. From Shihor of Egypt. Even to the entering of Hemna. To bring the ark of God from Kirch of Jerem. 1 Samuel 6.21 1 Samuel 6.21 And in chapter 5 There's a battle The ark is taken It is brought into Dagon's Residence, altar, church He falls down they pick him up. Next day he falls down and finds body parts cut. And they send it back to Israel. And we have a problem because let's look at verse 6 of six, chapter 6 verse 6 of 1 Samuel before we get to 21. 6-6. Six, six. That's an interesting number. Wherefore then do ye harden your hearts as the Egyptians, and as Pharaoh hardened his heart? When ye have wrought wonderfully among them, did they not let the people go, and they departed? Look at that. The Philistines knew the history of Egypt. Now therefore, make a new cart, and take two milk kine, which they have not come no yoke, and tie the kine to the cart, and bring the calves home with from them. So what the Philistines do, we went through this, is they say, build a brand new cart. Give God a brand new cart. You know, there's a lot of churches out there wanting to give their preacher a brand new car that he needs to travel around. But then they got one of the preachers travel around for their congregation. And he says, take two milk cows, two mother cows, and then tie up their babies, their calves. And what they're going to do is say, let the, let the cart go. And God directs it. And when God directs that cart, verse 21. And they sent messengers to the inhabitants of Kirch of Jerem, saying, the Philistines have brought again the ark of the Lord. Come ye down and fetch it up to you. <coughs> Excuse me. The men of Kirch of Jerem came and fetched up the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Benadab in the hill. And sanctified Eliezer the son to keep the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass while the ark abode in Kirch of Jerem that the time was long. For it was 20 years. So come back over here now to the Chronicles. There it is. It goes into uh, Abinadab's house and it stays there. It is not saw. Unto David said, okay, let's gather it. So, chapter 13, verse 5. 
And David gathered all Israel together from Shire of Egypt, even today entering Hamath to bring the Ark of the Lord from Kirch of Jerem. That's where we left off. Uh, 1 Samuel 6, 21, into chapter 7, verse 2 to 3. And David went up all Israel to Bala. You say, oh, that's got Baal in it. That is to Kirch of Jerem. All right, so Kirch of Jerem's got two names. I would assume the old name is Bala. That's Baal. And it's been changed to Kirch of Jerem, which belongeth to Judah. So we're in Judah, the land of Judah. To bring thence up the ark of God, the Lord, that dwells between the cherubims, whose name, whose name is called on it. And they carried the ark of God in a new car. Where, where did we pick that up? That was the Philistines we read. And we see that in the churches today. Listen, when I grew up, the things I'm going to mention that are in the church today were in the Catholic Church and were in the public school system. Carnivals was very well known when I grew up in, the, in New London growing up uh, uh, and Norwich, Connecticut. Uh, the Catholic Church had carnivals and circuses. That was very well known. It was very well known and we would make fun of it that they would have a bazaar. It would be bizarre to have something like that at a church. Bizarre. Bingo. Uh, yard sales, cake sales, rummage sales. And this stuff has creeped, the ways of the Philistines with Dagon has now creeped into the Baptist churches. And we're doing it for the Lord, we're doing it for Jesus, so it's got to be approved, and it's not. All right, the Philistines had a brand new car. You know what David did? He got a brand new car. He did not bring out the old Pharisee car. He said, new. New and approved. But he's still doing the Philistine way as the Baptist churches today. Well, we, we got a new program. We got a new thing. It's the same thing that the Catholics are doing. It's the same thing that the public school system is doing. And you preach against the public school. And you preach against the Catholics. And yet you are doing the, the cart that they have. And the particular expression I'm going to use used to be somebody who, who would be drunk, alcoholic. They would fall off the wagon. But you got to use that illustration for somebody who's going to get right today with Jesus and step outside the church. they got to fall off the cart. In a new cart out of the house of Benedict. See where we left off. And Uzzah and Ohio drive, dragged the cart. Well, that's something new. The Philistines gave God enough credit to say, Mumus, cows, you go. If the cows go into Israel, glory to God, it was God that did it. If they go somewhere else, you know, to the to the water or get some food or turn around, and come back home for their babies. It was just by chance. Nobody drove the Philistine car. Here we got the new car and we got people driving it. Maybe a pastor and associate pastor or a deacons. Someone's in charge. Drive the court car. And David and all Israel played before God with all their might, with singing, with harps. With faltry, with trembles, with cymbals, with trumpets. Does that sound great? Does, isn't that the music program? And yet they're doing it wrong. It doesn't belong on that cart. That cart is Philistine. And it's wrong. And God's going to disapprove in a few, few verses. And they're going to be Christians. There's going to be church members. There's going to be offices of the church. They're going to stand at either judgment, depending on if they're saved or lost. And I'm not going to say they're saved or lost. But they're going to stand at either judgment. They're going to find themselves at a loss. And they're going to call it a breach that God has destroyed the work at our hands as he will destroy us. Why did he destroy us? We're going to read a few verses. Because it was wrong. Why are you a Christian going to end up in the judgment seat of Christ and find 
most of your works burnt up because it was wrong. You can't think for a Bible-believing Christian to think carnal, bo, carnal, bo, could be something that God will use. A cert cuss is something that God will, oh, yeah, we've got to do that. And you would think that God said, you know, a reward. You're supposed to seek your rewards in heaven. And, well, we'll give you a Tootsie Roll. We'll put a $10 bill under one of the padded fuel pillows. So who he sits on it will get the $10. We'll have the dollar dance and then the $5 dance and the $10 dance and the $20 dance and the boogie woogie for, a for the $100 dance. And we'll have the coffee... Uh, you know, the coffee shop. I, now, listen, I'm not, I'm all for it. I'm, if I were to get a church going, we we're going to lay out tables instead of pews where you can put your Bible on there and, and you can make your notes and write your notes. And I, I'm, I've been to church where we had water and coffee. There's nothing wrong with that. But we got a coffee house in the, in the church. You, may, you know, another thing they used to do when I was in school every year, they would have a book table. People would come in to sell their books. Coloring books, art books, school books, all kinds of books. You name it. Our school was packed up for three days out of the year. Book, book fair. We got a, we got a guest preacher. We got a guest evangelist. What's in the back of the room on the table? Books. That's not what Jesus came in and knocked the tables over? Merchandise? We got a good orchestra. We got a good players. We're, we're singing, and most of your hymns are, are wrong. I'm already going through them. I have not yet had one church where we opened the Book of Psalms and put that to music. And yet, there's a hymn out there. Oh, this is of Psalm 32, and it blows Psalm 32 out of the water. Not a good way. Huh? Not a good way. Not a good way. So see, David, he's got the heart, he's got the art, he's got the Lord, he's got the music, and he's got it all wrong. You know what God says? I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Hey, you don't like it, that's tough. You end up in the judgment seat of Christ as a loss. I'm going to do what God's told me to do. And I'm going to preach the word. You don't like me? Fine. Get in line. I'm going to get me one of those, those deli things behind my back where you just pull a number. Number 46, now you can come up and yell at me now. 47, wait. Verse 9. And when they came to the threshing floor, that's, that's troubling areas in the Bible. Threshing floors. A lot of judgment going on in the threshing floor. Uh, Chidon. Uzzah put forth his hand to hold the ark. All right. For the ark stumbled. Hmm. So they're moving the cart around and the arts lost footing. Us is like, mm. you ever done that? You ever have something that's about to fall in the back of the car? You go up, you put your arm up. Your loved one, you, may, you know, they stumble on the ground. You, you put your arm out to hold them. You're in the closet, you grab, oh, gotta, gotta grab that. <laughs> Honey, will you come and hold this box while I get this other? Okay, nothing wrong with that, is it? No. Can you hold this while I do That's nothing wrong. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. Ooh. God got angry at the church service. And he smote him. God smote Uzzah because he put his hand to the ark. Let's go to Numbers 4.15. Let's find out why. Numbers 4.15, it's got to be a reason. And you do know that Numbers has been written before we're reading David's life right now. Numbers was written during the time of Moses. Moses has been long dead since David. David was a man of God. David was a man that could quote scripture. Joab acknowledged that. Hey, listen, when you go tell him that uh, Uriah is dead, he's going to say, as Abimelech, you know, that woman cast a millstone upon his head, hey, the man that did that, four sheep for one sheep. 
So David would know this. If not, at least the Levites and the priests should know this. So, Numbers chapter 4, verse 15. And when Aaron and his sons had made an end of covering the sanctuary, they're packing it up. Is that not what David just had to do? He had to pack it up to move it. And all the vessels of the sanctuary. He said, well, why didn't anybody get killed? Abimelech was a priest. That part was right. David's method was wrong. See, you can be a little right and still be a sinner. You see that in, in Genesis 3. And all the vessels of the sanctuary, as the camp is set forward, after David's going to go forward, after that, the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it. This is the ark. And all the vessels, the table, the altars, are to, they have staves. Those staves go on your shoulder of the of the children of Kohath. Kohath's job is, if it needs to be carried, it goes on your shoulder. As the camp is set forward, after that, the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it. But they shall not touch any holy thing, lest they die. Well, I would assume that that ark is a holy thing. Uzzah is not of the children of Kohath. In good conscience, the ark stumbled. I am going to uphold that ark. With you may have good intentions. You may want to see people saved, but if you do it the world of Dagon, or religion God says you're dead God has rules God said go in all the world and preach the, go the gospel he didn't say anything about carnal he didn't say anything about flesh matter of fact Paul writes to one of the churches he said the flesh and the spirit strive against each other they hate each other they fight each other so other he smote him because he put, verse 10, he put his hand to the ark, that's holy, Numbers 4, 15 says you weren't supposed to do that. And there he died before God. God, you're supposed to have more love, the woman told me today. He did, he told you, Numbers 14, 4, 15, don't touch it. I warned you. I told you not to be lukewarm, Revelation 3. I told you not to say you're rich. Revelation 3. I told you you're going to be pride and boastful all through the Bible. And now watch this. Verse 11. And David was displeased at Uriah. Nope. Because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. David got mad at God for killing Uzzah. When God told you don't touch it. You run that and it says, wherefore that place is called Para Uzzah to this day. It's funny. If we run back to Genesis 38, 29, there's a man named Perez. And him and his brother are inside their mother. And one sticks his hand out. They put a little red thread on it. And he pulls his hand back out and Uzzah comes out. Perez, excuse me. Perez comes out. And they say, what is this breach? And... There it you want to know a Hebrew word for the day? There it is. Perez. That means breach. There's a Hebrew word for you. God wants you to know that. That's also Perez is Perez also is also in the line of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter one and Luke chapter two or three. Two or three. That's of Judah. That's Judah who went with his son's wife, thought she was a whore. There you go. So David gets mad at God. And if you were to go up to the pastors today, and I've done it, and say, you're doing something wrong. You're going the ways of the world. Guess who's going to get mad? And guess who they're going to get mad at? They're going to get mad at you because how dare you tell them who they are? 
thou shalt not usurp the authority of, of God's men. Well, first of all, that's in Psalms, and that has nothing to do with you. And look what happened with David's attitude. And David was afraid of God that day. <laughs> Uh-oh. God's like, you don't mess around with his word. He got mad at God, and then David's heart is he got afraid of God. There you go. He saw that God killed Uzzah. Ooh, better watch my step now on. Saying, how shall I bring the ark of God home to me? And right then and there, he realized, God, how dare you? you oh, you know what? We must have did it wrong. And when he says, how shall I bring the ark of God home to me? He doesn't know yet. And we'll get into that, Lord willing, in chapter 15. But right now, we got a big problem. And he's probably shaking before that cart, before that ark, like, oh boy, what do we do? What do we do? And David was afraid of God that day, saying, how shall I bring the ark of God home to me? So David brought not the ark home to himself, to the city of David, Jerusalem, Mount Zion, but carried it aside into the house of Obadiah, the Gittite. And they are from Gath, 2 Samuel 21, 19. Children of Gath from 2 Samuel 21, 19. Let's leave it here. And the ark of God remained with the family of Obadiah in his house three months. And the Lord blessed the house of Obadiah and all that he had. So hey, we're going to leave it at Obadiah's house and Obadiah's house is woohoo, doing good. You know obadim has got to do right with the Lord because whenever somebody does wrong around this ark, consequences happen. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to head over to 2 Samuel 6. 2 Samuel 6. And we're just going to read the story in 2 Samuel 6, verse 1. <clears throat> Again, David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David arose and went with all the people that were with him from Bailey of Judah to bring up the fence, the ark of God, whose name is called upon the name of the Lord of hosts that dwells between the cherubim. So, a little more information between the two books. And they... Chronicles said, David, from 2 Samuel says, the people, they. You know why David is singled out in 1 Chronicles? He's the one that said, let's do this. He's the one in charge. And I'm going to take the accountability of saved. It'll be worse for lost, but you're going to have pastors who are going to be at the judgment seat of Christ, who has led their flock astray by the world, and by religion. And though the people are going to be charged because of what the pastor had them do. That pastor of that church is going to stand before God and he's going to have to give an account of his people and the people that followed him to do wrong. As much as Ahab was credited to the murder of Naboth because he couldn't control his wife. Come on, church. We're going to have a raffle. All right. I'm going to buy a ticket. Give me three tickets. And all the people in that congregation are going to be charged with gambling in the church house. And the one that set that up, even if it's not the pastor, the one that put themselves in charge of having a raffle and all the tickets and got everybody involved, that person is going to be single out before God for everyone who got involved in it. I tell you right now, I believe that many of these vacation Bible programs that they have, that they buy and all that, those people are going to have to see a lot of people with vacation Bible. They're going to see a lot of people stand before God, the anger of God, for doing a worldly thing. But woe be to the people that come up with those programs in the worldliness. 
Let's sing songs that have nothing to do with the Bible. They're not out of a hymn book. Let's have five-minute Bible study and we'll have 15 minute lunch and cookies, 20 minutes uh, uh, craft time, and 30 minutes out in the playground. Don't tell me I've been in those churches. I've worked with it. The one said, oh, let's have clowns for our vacation. But the person that came up with that is going to have to answer for that. And the people who dress as clowns for it are going to have to give account too. What a church age we live in. Let's get rid of the church rack and what we'll have, we'll have fellowship dinners. Everyone that made a fellowship dinner for that fellowship to invite the lost people to get a movie and the people that made the movie and all the nonsense for the worldliness are going to be charged. The one that came up with the idea, the one who's the, the, the brainchild of that idea, they're going to have to stand for everybody else will have to give an account. 2 Samuel 6 and then 1 Chronicles 13. Tell me where I'm wrong. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart. There it is. And brought it out of the house of Benadab. We read that. That was in Gibeah. It was another name in Chronicles. But it's the same place. It's got three names now. <laughs> That's some of the problems. You, you have me like, well, what, what, what about this name in the Bible? Just say it could be two or three names or four. <laughs> the Sea of Galilee has four names in the Bible. Joshua, I think he's got four or five. And they brought it out of the house of Benadab, which was in Gibna, accompanying, that's the only time that word shows up, the ark of God. So Abinadab is there. And Ohio, Ohio, and Ohio, I was going to say Ohio, went before the ark. It says over there in Chronicles that they're driving the ark. They weren't up there seated on the cart driving it. They were walking the animals. They didn't dare go sit up on the ark. Can't do that. That's holy. Which would tell uh, Faraz, I mean, uh, Uzzah, you shouldn't have done what you've done. And David and all the house played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fir wood. So we get more information on the harps and on psalteries and timbrels, on coronets, and on cymbals. That fur is the first time it shows up. There's the first time harps, psalteries, trimbles, coronets, and cymbals shows up in the Bible. That's the first time. For all, the for all, the, for all those instruments, the first time all of them, and fur, not wood, fur. So let's give credit to, hey, here's the musical instruments. And the first time they're named, they're doing it wrong. Shall we sing the Battle of the Republic in our church, number 857? It's wrong. When we've been there for 10,000 years, there's no time period in, the, in glory. You're wrong. Hey. Tell me a lie is a lie, no matter what the lie is, unless you want to change it. And when they came to Nick, Nick John's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the ark shook. That's the first time shook shows up. Chronicle says it, it stumbled, troubled someone. It said in the oxen stumbled. You know what shook is? Shook means strumble. So the, the oxen made that cart move. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah. And God smote him there for his error. That's the first time that shows up, error. There's the first time. And we're going to come back over here. Chronicles real quick to see what it says there. I just lost my marker. Okay, Chronicle. And he smote other there. That this said he smoked other in his hand. Because he put his hand. Because he put his hand. What was the error? Numbers 415, David. Other. 
You know, there's a lot of people in the ministry and a lot of people in church are touching things they ought not be touching. Better watch out where your hand goes. And there he died by the ark of God. David was displeased because the Lord had made a breach upon Uzzah. There, David angry again. And he called the name of the place Para Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day. He said, how shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not remove the ark of the Lord unto him, unto the city of David. I'm not moving it. And David, but David carried it aside to the house of Obadiah, the Gadai. Man, they're getting really risky with that ark. You just had one man. I don't know if they kept it on the ark. I mean, the cart. And the ark of God continued in the house of Obadiah, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obadiah and all his household. So there we go there. And it's just a wonderful study. And one thing, let's see, checking anything here. Uh, any new, no, no first times in First Chronicles 13. But that's a perfect example. And you'll hear the example, oh, David committed adultery. Oh, David committed adultery. David did false worship and God killed the man because of it. Doing false worship is just as bad as adultery. Just as bad. And believe me, it's into that Ladisian church age. 